I would like to start off this video by saying happy anniversary to In Ribbons, Pale Saint's second studio album. Released on March 23rd, 1992, today marks 30 years since fans got to hear the beautiful noises of In Ribbons. In celebration of this milestone, today is an excellent opportunity to tell the story of Pale Saints. The year is 1987 in Leeds, England. Ian Masters, Graeme Naismith, and Chris Cooper would form a band that was named after a song by a group called Eyeless in Gaza. The band was called Pale Saints. Graeme and Chris were responding to an ad that Ian had displayed in a record shop. Pulling in a wide variety of influences, Pale Saints managed to fuse their own type of dream pop, one which incorporated elements of C86, post-punk, and avant-folk. Ian would be the bassist and vocalist of the band, while Graeme and Chris played guitar and drums, respectively. The group would record their demo tape called Some New Songs by Pale Saints in 1988. When listening to the demo, one can hear right from the beginning the heavy influence of psychedelic rock, featuring buzzsaw guitars and occasionally a keyboard. It is evident that Pale Saints were still in the early stages of developing their sound. The group would go on to perform their first show in London in April of 1989. Among those in the audience was Ivo Watts Russell, co-founder of 480 Records who was searching for new talent. Ivo was impressed with what he heard, and Pale Saints was signed, along with Lush. Ashley Horner would join the group to play guitar, previously of the band Edsel Auctioneer. Their first official EP was released in September 1989, and I think in their record you start to hear the sound of the band developing more. Entitled Barging Into the Presence of God, the EP beautifully fuses jangle pop with neo-psychedelia. It was a re-recording of a demo that the band had recorded one year prior. The EP kicks off with Sight of You, a relatively simple but jangly piece of dream pop with a killer bass line. What follows is She Rides the Waves, which is far more noisy than the debut track, kind of reminding me of a jangly version of a track from My Bloody Valentine's debut album. The final track on the album is called Mother Might, and it's a stark contrast from the previous two songs. It has a melancholic gothic sound that features the strumming of acoustic guitars as a brass section enters the mix. All three of these tracks really stand apart from one another, and I thought it was interesting how the EP gets increasingly experimental as it progresses. Following the release of their debut EP, Pale Saints began to work on their first studio album. Recorded in Blackwing Studio in London, the name of the album was The Comforts of Madness, and it was released in February of 1990. Featuring several songs from some new songs by Pale Saints and Barging Into the Presence of God, the album kicks off with the driving percussion of Way the World Is. One can really hear the band moving closer to their shoegaze sound, as the guitars are noisier and distorted. Ian's vocals sound gentle and clear, perhaps becoming one of the most recognizable vocalists of shoegaze bands. In Sea of Sound, we hear a heavily reverb psychedelic sound that would be great to play while slipping into an acid trip. The track In Flowers is another highlight on the record, which masterfully blends jangle pop with distorted shoegaze riffs. Going out on a strong note, the final track, Time Thief, creates an interesting sound on the guitar that strums like the ticking of a clock. The track begins to speed up during the chorus sections before slowing back down during the verses. All in all, The Comforts of Madness is an ambitious record that's not afraid to push the bounds of sound and tempo. Simon Williams of NME called it an unnervingly multidimensional collage of melody and friction. The magazine would later declare it the 45th best album of 1990. The Comforts of Madness was also a commercial success, reaching number 40 on the UK album charts. Following the release of their first studio album, Pale Saints recruited former guitarist of Lush Muriel Barham as second guitarist and vocalist. Mickey Berenyi had strongly recommended Muriel to the band, and she was soon welcomed into the group. She would first appear on the EP Half-Life, released in October of 1990. While listening to Half-Life Remembered, the first track on the EP, there's an intriguing change in pace both figuratively and literally. The track frequently changes in tempo, but I think it pulls this off well. Muriel's backing vocals are a welcome addition to the group, enhancing the progressive, dreamy atmosphere. The track would go on to reach number 86 on the UK singles charts. 
In Baby Maker, there is a much noisier shoegazy sound with jagged guitars and distorted riffs. Like the first track on the EP, Muriel provides background vocals to Ian's lead. The next track is called Two Six Sisters, and it's definitely one of the more experimental tracks by the group. Abandoning percussion almost entirely, what takes center stage is a spacey atmosphere created by Ian's angelic vocals and weird synth sounds. The final track is called A Revelation, and in it there is a return to a more conventional song structure. It's an up-tempo guitar-driven piece that follows an unusual time signature. Like previous releases from the group, I think that Pale Saints is able to pull off a plethora of soundscapes and rhythms throughout its four tracks, which is a testament to the band's creativity. Really 1991 proved to be a productive year for Pale Saints, as they embarked on a tour with Pixies and would release an EP in June. Called Flesh Balloon, the record was produced by Hugh Jones, who had previously worked with groups like Echo and the Bunnymen and Modern English. Hunted is the first track on the album, spanning six and a half minutes in length. It's a haunting track that grows and intensifies as the jangly guitars become heavy and distorted. Completely absent of any vocals in its final few minutes, the drumming becomes more militant as the track marches forward. Porpoise is the second track from the EP, also spanning about six minutes. In instrumental track, we get kind of a funky guitar-driven sound backed by an awesome bass line. Kinky Love, the third track on the EP, is significant for a few reasons. For one, it's the first time we get to hear Muriel Barham's lead vocals, which adds a whole new dimension to the band's sound. In obscure Nancy Sinatra cover, the track became an instant hit for the group, reaching number 72 on the UK singles charts. On top of all that, it's simply a great dream pop track. Muriel's vocals are mellow, but quite pretty. Backed by wavy and lush guitar chords, when I hear this track, I get the feeling like I'm floating down a river on a warm spring morning. The final track on the EP is a demo called Hair Shoes. Ian returns for lead vocals after backing away during the previous two tracks. Kind of a psychedelic track which also has minimal percussion, it's mostly driven by the tremolo guitar work, presumably by Graham. Flesh Balloon would lay the groundwork for the group's second studio album. Once again produced by Hugh Jones, In Ribbons was recorded throughout late 1991 and early 1992. Released in March of the latter year, what can be heard is a focused, more polished sound that I would describe as melodic shoegaze. Featuring a number of tracks from the previous two EPs, including Hunted and Hair Shoes, one can hear how the band had been building towards this moment. The album is noticeably more serious than The Comforts of Madness, but the experimental instrumentation is definitely still there. Peppered throughout the album, we can hear synthesizers and even a cello, really allowing for Pale Saints to set themselves apart from their contemporaries. In Throwing Back the Apple, we have the culmination of Ian and Muriel's beautiful harmonizing vocals. We get to hear the top-notch guitar riffs and slightly unusual rhythm, which makes this track an excellent start to the album. Thread of Light is another highlight on the album, this time featuring Muriel as lead vocalist. This track is beautifully serene, with her vocals layered and harmonized upon one another. I especially love the outro of this track, which is a one minute repetition of a heavy guitar riff. It sounds both distorted and mysterious. Muriel also serves as lead vocalist in Feather Frame, which is another song that has a heavily distorted main riff that guides us through the track. The final track is called A Thousand Stars Burst Open, and it really does feel like the end of something. What I enjoyed most about this track was the aforementioned cellos, which enter about a minute in. The first half of the track is instrumental, with Ian's vocals entering a bit later. The track is a bit on the slower side, but I think it makes good use of its time as it begins to incorporate more layers of sound throughout. It concludes with an epic guitar solo, which ends abruptly. When listening to this track, the visuals of a sun setting or the last song at a high school dance appear in my head. I think the genius of In Ribbons is its ability to employ a diverse sound palette while not sounding jumbled or overblown. I can't help but notice how focused and developed the tracks on this album sound, really showcasing Pale Saint's ability to explore an idea to its full potential. Mm -hmm. 
the record was acclaimed by critics. For instance, Jack Rabbit of Trouser Press called in ribbons alluring and attractive, rich in complexity and raw emotion. Despite the fact that by 1992, shoegaze music was going out of style, In Ribbons did reach number 61 on the UK album charts. Pale Saints embarked on a brief tour in 1992 in the United States and Canada. However, Ian would depart from the group in 1993. His reason for leaving was reportedly due to being uninterested in touring and a desire to record more experimental music. Following his departure, Ian would collaborate with a number of different musicians over the years. In the meantime, Pale Saints would recruit Colleen Brown as bassist, formerly of the band Heartthrobs. Muriel was left as the sole vocalist. Pale Saints continued to move forward, releasing their next EP entitled Fine Friend in 1994. The title track is kind of an acoustic, neo-psychedelic number, reminding me of a Mazzy Star song. What follows next is Special Present, which begins with an aggressive, head-banging guitar riff. Spanning seven minutes in length, the track is another tempo shifter. Marimba is a mostly instrumental song that is both hypnotic and spacey throughout its six minutes. The EP concludes with Reprise, which is less than two minutes in length. It features Muriel repeatedly singing I'll Never Walk Into Your Arms over a spacey ambient sound. Fine Friend did not chart upon its release. While it may not be as notable as the band's previous releases, I think Fine Friend does a good job moving forward from the Ian Masters era of the band. Pale Saints would release their final album in August 1994. Entitled Slow Buildings, it features the aforementioned Fine Friend in the album. Angel Will You Be My is an alternative rock love song which definitely had the potential to be a hit. It kind of reminded me a bit of Hypocrite by Lush. The album also has a nearly 11 minute track entitled Henry which breaks new ground for the band. A stark contrast from Angel, the track enters post-rock territory with its fuzzy guitar textures and minimal vocals. Under Your Nose is another strong track on the album which is a noisy shoegaze song that sounds reminiscent of the music from In Ribbons or The Comforts of Madness. To be completely honest, I was pleasantly surprised upon listening to Slow Buildings. While I don't think it is as good as their previous albums, I did admire the ambition that could be heard in some of the more experimental tracks. However, the album failed to chart upon its release, and it received unenthusiastic reviews from critics. Pale Saints would embark on one more round of tours in the United States and Europe, their final recording was a cover track for a Tom Waits tribute album called Jersey Girl in 1995. Muriel would leave the band soon after, and Pale Saints officially disbanded in 1996. Graham and Chris would continue to work together on various projects, while Muriel would record under the new name Cutchin. Colleen would go on to perform with groups like Warm Jets and White Hotel. In 2020, Ian worked with director Tarako Terao to make a video for Sight of You on Record Store Day. It's a beautiful visualization of a song recorded decades earlier. We get to see a 50-something Ian lip sync to the vocals he recorded 30 years earlier. Over the past 10 or so years, we have seen the reuniting of Pale Saints contemporaries, including Slow Dive, My Bloody Valentine, and Lush. I would really like to see the former members of Pale Saints revisit their music, whether it be through a series of performances or a new EP. Though predominantly associated with the shoegaze scene, Pale Saints transcended genre by experimenting with neo-psychedelia, jangle pop, and post-rock throughout their short career. It amazes me the amounts of sounds, instrumentations, styles, and time signatures the band fused together throughout their short time. Truly prioritizing quality over quantity, today is the perfect day to celebrate Pale Saints and appreciate their creativity. I am Nathaniel Jordan from Only Shoegaze. Please let me know which band you would like me to cover next. It is truly my mission to spread the word about some of the most innovative and influential bands that go underappreciated nowadays. For more Shoegaze content, please be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Both positive and negative comments contribute to the improvement of this channel and are greatly appreciated as well. Thanks for watching the video and happy 30 year anniversary to In Ribbons.